Welcome to Harren Hall Part 2. In the first part, we explored House Horror, Coheris, Haraway, and Towers, and the origins of House Strong. In this video, we'll dive into the fall of House Strong, the rise of Houses Lothstone and Went, and the fate of Harren Hall in A Song of Ice and Fire itself. As always, like and subscribe for more content. Check out my Patreon if you're interested, and let me know in the comments which of these upcoming houses is your favourite. Following the aftermath of the Great Council of 101, Viserys I Targaryen was building his court and council. In 105, he chose as his master of laws Lord Lionel Strong. With Lord Lionel came his two sons, Larys Strong, who would never do harm to anybody, and Harwin Strong, winner of Witch Weekly's Most Charming Smile Award three years running. Over the next four years, Harwin became a captain with the Gold Cloaks, Larys joined the King's Confessors, and Lord Lionel succeeded Otto Hightower as Hand of the King. And this is where things get fuzzy. Within the events surrounding the Dance of the Dragons, not only do we have multiple perspectives to contend with within the literature, we now also have House of the Dragon to contend with, creating multiple distinct canons that may or may not have anything to do with one another. Meaning you need to play a game of 5D chess with weirdwood time travel to make sense of anything, but here's what we know. This next part will spoil a popular show on HBO. That's right. The Sopranos. In 114 AC, Harwin became the sworn shield to Viserys I's only daughter, the distinctly badass Rhaenyra Targaryen, decreed heir to the Iron Throne. Over the next few years, Laenor and Rhaenyra announced to the world three children, but none of them bore the strong Valyrian features you would expect of a marriage between two Valyrian households. In fact, we are told, they all looked weirdly like the princess's sworn shield. Must have been all the recessive traits. Rhaenyra's power and her right to the throne was beginning to be put under a microscope as two teams began forming. Team Black rallied behind Princess Rhaenyra and Team Green amassed behind Queen Alicent's oldest son, Aegon II. Meanwhile, Larry Strong, known as the Clubfoot, was amassing power in his own shadowy way. In House of the Dragon, he develops a relationship of extortion with Queen Alicent, through whom he wields power and to whom he feeds information, though this is still somewhat less certain in the books. In 120 AC, a terrible fire erupted at Harrenhal, consuming huge parts of the castle. Lord Lionel Strong died with his son Harwin, who was taken from figuratively to literally the hottest guy in Westeros. This left only Larys alive to claim his family seat as Lord Confessor, Master of Whisperers, and Lord of Harrenhal. Their remains were cremated. Technically. When the great civil war we call the Dance of the Dragons broke out in 129 AC, Lyrus was one of the conspirators at the Green Council who usurped the throne and crowned Aegon II before Rhaenyra could respond. Harrenhal was taken for Rhaenyra through her husband, Prince Daemon, quickly in the war, and all the Strongs were taken captive. Later in the war, as both sides bloodied each other and Larry spun webs and crafted contingency plans, Aemond Targaryen, Aegon II's younger brother, took the castle back and put every Strong to death, except one, a bastard. Alice Rivers. When Rhaenyra captured King's Landing, Larys acted fast to spirit Aegon and two of his children out of the city through the Ant Hive of Secret Passages. Following the riot of King's Landing, Larys pretended to support one of the three petty kings who rose up in the city, but betrayed him almost at once to let Aegon's supporters back in the city. Wow, this Larys fellow seems devoted to the cause. He must be really trustworthy and honorable. Finally, after Aegon was back on the throne, intending to continue a losing war, Larys appears to have conspired to kill him via poison in his wine. Oop, never mind. Larys' luck finally ran out with the arrival of Cregan Stark, who took power as Hand of the King and condemned Larys for his warmongering and kingslaying. He offered Larys a chance to go to the Wall, to which Larys' strong Lord of Harrenhal replied, I think not, Lord Stark. I'll be going to a warmer hell if you please. And with a single swing of the Valyrian greatsword Ice, Cregan Stark eradicated House Strong. Wait a second, they killed all the descendants of Lucamor the Lusty? Well, that's just it. We don't know for sure. There's a lot of ambiguity in this story, and a lot of strong bastards to contend with. Alice Rivers controlled Harrenhal for some time after the dance, and she claimed to be Aemon's widow, carrying the child of a dragon and witch. And what of the other bastards of Sir Lucamore? There were sixteen of them from Storm's End to Driftmark. In the modern story, we have Coles and the Second Sons and the remnants of the Kingswood Brotherhood at the Wall, so why not Strong's? And of course, when I said Cregan ended House Strong with a single swing, I lied. There were two cuts. Larys made a last request to Lord Stark for him to cut off the clubfoot that had plagued him all his life. Personally, I would have requested a last meal of nachos and margaritas. Lord Stark granted the last request of the Lord of Harrenhal, but when Larys' bones were returned to Harrenhal years later, his foot was not among them. As is so common in this story, there are many loose ends. And loose feet. But we'll have to find those some other time. Greetings, everyone. Random internet guy here. Perhaps the most infamous house, after House Horror to call Harrenhal their seat, House Lostin's history intertwines with the heights of power, the favor of monarchy, and the depths of depravity alike. 
known far and wide by their sigil, a black bat on a field of white and gold. House Lawston first appears in the available histories during Magor the Cruel's trial by seven. Lucas Lawston, the unlikely son of a hedge knight, was named Master of Arms at the Red Keep. Lucas's ascent to the lordship of Harrenhal is quite the tale within itself, and doubly intertwined with that of Aegon IV. After a young prince Aegon was caught abed with the Lady Flaena Stokeworth, his father King Viserys arranged for Lady Flaena to marry Sir Lucas. In an attempt to put distance between Flaena and the royal court, and to reward Lucas for his service in the arranged marriage, the king gifted him Harrenhal. Flaena soon gave birth to a daughter, Jane, whom it was rumored may have been the child of Prince Aegon himself and not Sir Lucas. Though these rumors could never be proven, they hung over Jane Lawston during her entire tenure in King's Landing. What was verifiable, however, was the pox that Aegon IV transmitted to Jane, which proved to be a convenient cover to dismiss not only her as mistress, but all Lostons from court. Approaching the end of their tenure in the Halls of Power, the Lostons had already begun to garner a bad name for themselves. In the case of Manfred Lawston, who played both sides in the first Blackfyre Rebellion, the reputation of duplicitousness was perhaps not undeserved. It is shortly after the Second Blackfyre Rebellion that House Lawston would begin its rapid descent into the annals of history, not just in disgrace, but amid abject horror. By the late 210s, control of House Lawston had fallen to its most infamous member, Donnell Lawston, perhaps better known as Mad Donnell. Rumors and legends range from Donnell drinking and even bathing in the blood of women to the consumption of flesh at feasts, and it is said that she had a fondness particularly for the flesh of children. These child victims were abducted by gargantuan bats made to do the bidding of the Mad Lady. These tales may in fact be nothing more than tales. Stark and seemingly intentional parallels exist between the Lady Donnell and two prominent nobles in European history, the first being Giles de Rays, I'm not pronouncing that correctly, who lived during the 1400s. Rays was a nobleman and knight from Brittany as well as a leader in the French army and companion of Joan of Arc. He became famous, however, not for his deeds on the battlefield or for the companionship of the famous Joan. De Rays is best remembered for his alleged crimes and later conviction as a child serial killer. Ray shared much in common with his female Song of Ice and Fire counterpart, and it seems likely that the Nell's portrayal in a fine-fitting suit of black plate armor draws heavy inspiration from artistic depictions of Ray. Though the weight of vile crimes hangs over the head of Ray, virtually no evidence was ever put forth to prove his guilt. His confession relied on the unreliable legal mechanism of torture, and though efforts were made to recover proof, no remains of victims were ever found and modern scholars and investigators have postulated more than once that Ray was the victim of a plot to seize his highly coveted lands and titles. Perhaps the legends that surround Anel Lawston are equally as unsubstantiated. Elizabeth Barthony was a Hungarian noblewoman born in 1650, and she had previously been the template for Donnell's dark fantasy counterpart of the year 2000, the Countess of Diablo II. Barthony and her entourage of servants were charged with many of the same crimes as Donnell has said to have partaken in, with the murders of hundreds of young girls laid at their feet, alongside the accusations of bathing in the blood of virgins to maintain their youth. This begs us all to ask the question, was Donnell truly a perpetrator of such crimes? No matter the truth, though, the name Lawston currently lives in unrivaled villainy throughout much of the world of ice and fire. With the collapse of House Lawston came the rise of House Went, knights who turned against their mad lady. Little is known about this dynasty, but we know of a few Wents scattered here and there. Lord Hoster Tully's only wife was Lady Manissa Went, who passed her beauty down to Catelyn Stark, while Lord Walder Frey's fifth wife was Lady Saria Went, who produced no progeny. Just before Robert's Rebellion, Lord Walter Went held the infamous tourney at Harrenhal to honour his beautiful daughter. We know how that turned out. Lord Walter's brother, Sir Oswell of the Kingsguard, was ordered to guard the Tower of Joy by Rhaegar Targaryen during the Rebellion. He was slain by Ned Stark and his six companions. After the Rebellion, Walter and all of his offspring passed away. Harrenhal passed to the widowed Lady Shella Went, who holds the castle at the start of the books. She's forced out and later dies of page, according to Littlefinger at least. In the main book series, Harrenhal is claimed and occupied by a menagerie of nobles and warriors. Lord Tywin Lannister seizes Harrenhal when the War of the Five Kings breaks out, and temporarily holds this as a strategic position in the Riverlands. Down in King's Landing, Queen Cersei grants Harrenhal to Janos Slint, the commander of the City Watch, who proved his loyalty to the Lannisters by betraying Ned Stark and his Northmen. 
This is but the first of Cersei's many political blunders, as the nobles of the Red Keep are shocked that the son of a common butcher be elevated to lordship, and granted such a grandiose seat. House Slint of Harrenhal does not last for long. The acting hand of the king, Tyrion Lannister, considers Lord Slint to be a puppet of his sister, so strips him of his lordship and ships him off to the Wall, although his sons are allowed to retain their noble status. Harrenhal loses its lord, but gains a new Castellan. Before he leaves Harrenhal, Tywin grants its garrison to his sadistic bannerman, Sir Amory Lorch, the man who murdered Rhaegar's daughter during the sack of King's Landing. His tenure is short-lived. Roose Bolton persuades the mercenaries serving the Lannisters, the Brave Companions, to switch sides to Robb Stark, promising the lordship of Harrenhal to its leader, Vargo Hote. Northern lords and soldiers are taken hostage, brought into the castle, and then released by the Companions, who capture it from within. While Roose Bolton holds Harrenhal in practice, King Joffrey Baratheon officially grants the seat to Lord Peter Baelish, who is also named Lord Paramount of the Trident. Littlefinger has yet to step foot inside his new castle, but he certainly steps over it in his climb to power and higher social status. Roose Bolton leaves Harrenhal to attend the Red Wedding, placing Vargo Hote in charge. When Robb Stark is slain and the Lannisters march on Harrenhal, most of the brave companions flee the castle, but Vargo stays behind, half mad from fever. Harrenhal soon falls under the command of Sir Gregor Clegane, until he's summoned to King's Landing, and hands the garrison over to one of his men, Polliver. Polliver does not hold this position for long, and the castle garrison remains leaderless, until Sir Jaime Lannister arrives and appoints Sir Bonifer Hasty in charge. Unlike the string of sadistic brutes before him, Sir Bonifer is a pious man who commands the Holy Hundred. But what fate did these squabbling lords and temporary castellans meet? Jano Slint is beheaded by Lord Commander Jon Snow, the bastard son of the man he betrayed. Tywin Lannister is shot by his own son while sitting on the privy. Sir Aimery Lorch is thrown into a bear pit by Vargo Hote. Vargo is gradually dismembered and eventually beheaded by the Mountain. The Mountain becomes a potentially undead slave serving Kyburn and Cersei Lannister, while Polliver is slain by the Hound during a fight at the Crossroads Inn. Of all the characters to have held Harrenhal over the course of the books, only three are still alive. Roose Bolton, currently trapped in Winterfell while Stannis Baratheon approaches, Peter Baelish, whose grandiose plans will surely cause his downfall, and Sir Bonifer, who, I don't know, maybe he'll slip on a banana peel or something. If you haven't seen part one for some reason, you can check it out here. Like, subscribe, and comment to help this channel grow. Thanks to Zach and Tom from the Interesting Nerd Club, as well as Random Internet Guy. Go give them a sub if you want. Special thanks to my patrons Alex and Coleshot for their support. See you next time.